Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sybin, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, I have something quite special for you a quick look at Gerard Capuchin's history on Dominaria. Although he won't be making a direct appearance in the new set, this classic character played a huge role in stories of old. Stories remembered in his own saga, The Triumph of Gerard. Now what makes this video extra special is that I'll be featuring some unique animated artwork from Dominaria. Be on the lookout for those, but you really can't miss them. These were done by my good friend Mike, who does an amazing job bringing these cards and moments to life. I can't stress this enough guys, go check out his channel, I have it linked in the description below. This guy needs way more hype around him. And if you like his work on this video, well we have a special project we'd like to start here on the channel, but of course that takes both interest and support. Let us know if you'd like to see fully animated character trailers in the comment section below and consider supporting this effort on Patreon to get this project up and running. Again guys, find that link below. And with all those plugs out of the way, let's get back to the lore. Our story begins way back, thousands of years before the current events, during Urza's earliest encounters with Phyrexia. Some time ago, the Shard of the Twelve Worlds was broken, the Flood Age had ended, and as a result, the Phyrexians were finally able to start invading Dominaria. In order to combat this inevitable threat, Urza had decided to create an army of his own. An army of skilled mages, and thus, he and his friend Baron broke ground on the Talarian Academy. After a failed Phyrexian attack on the Academy, perpetrated by their sleeper agents, Urza decided to change directions, and instead of solely training young mages, he chose to start working on another, arguably quicker, solution which he dubbed the Bloodline Project. This project had but two goals. Create an army of powerful creatures known as the Metathrain, and by manipulating family bloodlines through arranged marriages, create those who would be the peak perfection of what humanity had to offer. How this was quicker than teaching spells is beyond me, but hey, Urza was the genius here, not me. Many years later, the Phyrexians caught wind of what Urza was doing, and they launched a preemptive strike on the project site, killing almost everyone they encountered, rendering the entire project useless. Well, that's what the Phyrexians thought anyway. A survivor of their attack, a young boy named Gerard, was taken away by Karn, his silver golem guardian, and given to Sadar Kondo, who would keep the boy safe and more importantly, keep the boy's true purpose a secret. A secret that he would take to his grave. A lot happened during his most formidable years here with his adopted father, a man of great skill, conviction, and pride, leader of the Jamora War Clan. Gerard, along with Karn, grew and learned much from this new life. But as the Phyrexians caught wind of Urza's prized solution living, well, they just had to go ahead and ruin it. The Phyrexians actually went and manipulated Gerard's adoptive brother, Vol, and turned him against his family. Vol raised an army, fought and killed his own father, just to prove he was a more rightful heir than this outsider Gerard. Vol would be corrupted further, eventually becoming the Phyrexian whore known as Volrath. After his adopted father Sidar was killed, Gerard was taken to another friend of Urza's, and it was there that he would meet new allies, Rofellos and Miri. The three would eventually come into contact with Sisse, the captain of the Weatherlight, and actually another survivor of the Bloodline Project. Together with the Weatherlight crew, they would travel Dominaria and beyond in search of pieces to Urza's legacy weapon. It's here on the Weatherlight that Gerard falls in love with Hannah, the ship's navigator and daughter of Baron. And lucky for him, that feeling was mutual. The original Weatherlight crew would eventually be disbanded when they were ambushed by Phyrexians which resulted in Rofello's death. Gerard left the crew in grief, but was eventually convinced to rejoin the newest iteration of the Weatherlight cast. The new crew members consisted of Krovax, Miri, Squee, Orim, Hannah, Irte, Tangrath, Sisse, and Karn. Gerard, are you sure you know where we're going? Sisse, it's dark. Could you give me a hand? I said I needed a hand. Uh, I didn't mean this. 
This new crew went on many adventures together, but most notably traveling to Wrath, where Gerard fought Volrath, his corrupted adopted brother, at his stronghold. Oh, and they also went to Mercadia. Yay! Gerard's biggest achievement, his triumph, came when Dominaria was finally invaded by the Phyrexians. The Phyrexians were invading through the planar portal within the Caves of Kolios, the same ancient planar portal which Yagmoth had used to bring his army to Dominaria the first time, causing the downfall of the Thran Empire. Unfortunately for Gerard, Hannah was infected by the Phyrexian Plague and died soon after the invasion began. This completely broke the man, but with the help of his friends, he eventually overcame the grief and chose to focus on what was really important, stopping the Phyrexian forces. The crew scored some minor victories here and there, but they were eventually defeated, with Gerard being taken by the now corrupted Krovax, who was also a vampire and a servant of the Phyrexians. Being taken back to Phyrexia, Gerard actually lost his will to go on with this fight. He pledged himself to serve Yagmoth in return for him resurrecting his love Hannah, the only true thing he really cared about. But before the Lord of Wastes would do that, Gerard needed to prove himself. He had Gerard taken to the Phyrexian arena, where he would fight Urza to the death. And although the power level doesn't really match up, Gerard actually won. Now, to be fair to Urza, his Planeswalker abilities were forcibly nullified, and Yagmoth forced the skilled mage to fight basically hand-to-hand. -hand. Of course he was going to lose to the Weatherlight's master at arms. But this was actually more of a test of loyalty for either of them, more than anything else. Both Urza and Gerard had come to Yagmoth pledging loyalty and betraying their lifelong crusades. This fight would determine which truly wished to serve their new master. So, long story short, Gerard was victorious, and as a reward for butchering and decapitating his former master, Yagmoth kinda stuck to his word, creating a replica of Hannah. But it was just that. A replica. Even the godlike Yagmoth couldn't bring someone back from the dead. After learning it was just a dummy, in a sense, Gerard stabbed his false love, throwing Yagmoth into a rage, flinging Gerard instinctively out of Phyrexia, along with Urza's head which he was still holding. At this point, Yagmoth was pretty fed up. He entered Dominaria in the form of a death cloud and started killing everyone around him, resurrecting everyone as mindless undead. In an effort to stop him, Gerard and the Weatherlight pierced the Null Moon, an ancient Thran satellite once used by Yogmoth and then a resistance force against him. This caused an enormous amount of white mana to wash over Yogmoth, but ultimately it wasn't enough to kill him. He was weakened, but was still very, very much alive. In a last ditch effort, Urza's head, who was still alive somehow, because pre-mending planeswalkers are insane, told Gerard to take out his power stone eyes and place them into Karn's chest, thus completing the legacy weapon and fulfilling his destiny. In combining Karn, the power stones, and Gerard's own life, the legacy weapon was activated and Yagmoth was finally killed. Sadly, along with Gerard and Urza as well. Gerard and Urza's consciousness actually fused with Karn during the detonation of the Weatherlight and Karn's ascension into a Planeswalker, but so far, there hasn't been any mention of them, leaving me to believe that they just faded away eventually. Some may say that their knowledge and personalities have shaped Karn from this point on, which I undoubtedly believe is true, but I don't think Karn is storing their personalities within him, waiting to let Urza or Gerard take over. This would be the end of Gerard's story, his destiny fulfilled, saving all of Dominaria in sacrificing himself. 
This is his saga. He certainly had moments of doubt, misery, despair, and even betrayal, but despite it all, the Bloodline Project proved its worth. Urza's genius actually did some good for a change, and Gerard became one of the greatest heroes in Magic the Gathering history. This saga is the least we can do to remember his deeds. Of course, Gerard would live on through his family name, as new heroes look to make their own sagas on Dominaria. Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for this lore video. I hope you all enjoyed the animations done to Triumph of Gerard, Yagmoth's Vile Offering, and Ensnaring Bridge from Masters 25. Again, check out Mike from Mythic Tales YouTube channel for more of his amazing work. Link can be found in the description. Let us know if you want to see more of his work in unique character spotlight videos in the comments and consider supporting that project on Patreon. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to throw it a like, subscribe, and of course share it across the multiverse. As always everyone, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time here on the Ether Hub.